My name is Trey Granger. I'm the uh, Search Technology Development Manager at CareerBuilder.com. Um, most of you guys probably know who we are. Um, I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, but my presentation today is on building a real-time solar-powered recommendation engine. Uh, so in terms of what we're going to cover, um, I'm going to start off with um, a general overview of uh, search and matching concepts. Um, everyone here should be pretty solid on those. <laughs> Uh, but I want to um, take them in a slightly different angle than perhaps how you normally think about uh, search with Lucene and Solar. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of different recommendation types that you can implement um, directly using Solar. A lot of people use Mahout or other um, open sourced uh, machine learning algorithms. But um, a lot of these that you see up here you're probably familiar with, like collaborative filtering. Uh, you can actually do it in solar, which a lot of people wouldn't naturally think uh, to do. So I'm going to go over how we've implemented it and some ways that you could actually look to do it um, in a relatively simple, simple fashion. Uh, so specifically, I'm going to talk about attribute-based recommendations, hierarchical classification, concept-based recommendations, uh, more like this recommendations, collaborative filtering, and some hybrid approaches. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to go over just a couple of things we do at Career Builder that are a little bit uh, different or unique uh, that you may also be able to implement. So to tell you a little bit about myself as I start out, uh, I'm, uh, I've been at Career Builder for about five years. Uh, I've been working at, uh, in search for most of that time. Um, I've got a significant amount of uh, background in search and recommendations um, in building very high volume interior architectures and in natural language processing, relevancy tuning, uh, user group testing and machine learning. Uh, and then I also have a fun side project, um, sillyaccess.com, which is a gluten-free search engine and, and networking site uh, built on top of solar. So if uh, anyone in here um, avoids gluten like the plague, you might want to check it out. It's a fun side project. Um, and then also, um, I've just signed on with Manning to co-author an upcoming Solar in Action book. Uh, we're at early phases of writing it, but look, look for a meet on that uh, coming out in the not too distant future. So to tell you about Career Builder, uh, we have about a million or so new jobs posted each month. Um, and at any given time, we've got about 45 million active resumes. And that's people who come to our website, post their resume, and say, yes, I want you to allow companies to search for my resume and contact me. So we have a lot more than 45 million, but these are just the ones people are OK being pseudo public. Um, in terms of our search architecture, we've got about 250 um, servers that are running solar and only solar. Um, so that should give you a pretty good feel for the scale we're working at in terms of search. Um, and those are distributed across multiple data centers in the US, Asia, and in Europe. And then in terms of the number of indexes we have, we've got, I don't know the exact number because a lot of them are dynamically um, created, but we've got somewhere between three and 5,000 um, unique indexes that we search across um, across our entire platform. Some of those are customer specific. A lot of those are uh, highly sharded. So we've got, um, we've got one particular cluster that's got 30 cores across 10 servers, and every single search uses all 30 of those cores. So it's a lot of data we're going through. Um, and some of them are just high volume. We've got um, 500 or 600 queries a second going against uh, some of these clusters. So uh, fairly high volume, um, hundreds of millions of search documents, and over a million searches an hour, all hitting solar. So uh, to give you an idea about some of the products we have at Career Builder that solar is powering, um, everyone's probably familiar with our job search functionality. We also have a resume database where you can search through resumes which is also powered off of solar. Um, we use it to power our autocomplete capabilities, um, our job recommendations, resume recommendations. Um, we also have um, a nifty supply and demand portal. So we're, we're trying to get more into data analytics. So you can imagine we have tons of resumes coming into our site, which is basically the market supply of people who have particular skill sets. And then we have tons of um, jobs coming in, which is the, the market demand for those skills. So you can imagine putting those into a search engine and very easily creating a supply and demand portal where you can actually go to, you, you can search for specific skills in specific locations, um, and you can try to figure out where the best place is to, for example, open up a new 
uh, manufacturing plant? Where am I going to be able to find people that I can hire at the right rates um, where there's actually enough of those people? So uh, we're um, doing some very interesting work in the data analytics realm. Um, company search, um, compensation insights. So just like with our supply and demand information, we can also provide salary information. So if you're looking to hire somebody with a specific skill set, we can tell you the approximate range you should be looking at in terms of what you should be offering them compensation-wise. Um, I won't talk about this one too much, but uh, something else would power off of solar. Um, job application search, um, and we also have a talent network where a company can come to us and um, put their content into our platform, and they get a site that looks like theirs, but we're really powering it in the back end. Um, and we're also now venturing into the social networking world a little bit. Um, we've got um, a new website that launched recently called Network Effect, which basically allows you to pull in your connections, and as you're doing your job search, tie those in to the companies you're looking at. So you can actually, instead of just sending your resume to a company and hoping that they reply back to you, you can actually find someone you know um, or someone in your network that works at that company and reach out to them. Um, and then we've got tons of mobile um, apps as well um, for various sites that we operate. Okay, so that's enough about Career Builder. From this point on, um, other than at the very end, I'm not going to talk about us very much. I'm going to be talking more about the, some of the methods that we implement for uh, recommendations. Uh, so starting out, I want to kind of redefine the way that you might think about Lucene and Solar. So this is the um, blurb about Lucene that's taken from the uh, main Lucene, Lucene webpage. And it says that Lucene is a high-performance, full-featured text search engine library. But I would like you to think of it instead as a high-performance, fully-featured token matching and scoring library that can perform full-text searching. In other words, full-text searching is an, one implementation of this token matching and scoring. But it's not the only one. Um, and even further refining that, for those of you in here who um, do some machine learning um, or in the recommendations realm, let's actually call it Lucene a um, multi-dimensional sparse matrix with very fast and powerful lookup capabilities. Um, so if you think of each field effectively as a matrix containing each term mapped to each document, then you can actually do some interesting lookup um, capabilities um, at, on the fly. So here's your traditional look at the Lucene Inverted Index. Um, you come in, I've got a bunch of documents on the left, and I've got some content for those documents. Uh, when that's fed into Lucene or Solar, uh, what you end up with is, is an inverted index where you've got each of the words, each of the terms uh, from the original content tokenized out, and then you've got them mapped to the documents um, that they correspond with. So. Uh, Taking this search, um, I want to search in the job content field for the, the for software engineer. Uh, this actually gets broken up into so the word software and the word engineer, those tokens. And then from our um, inverted index over here, we can actually do a lookup. So I'm going to I'm going to first take the word software and I'm going to look it up in this inverted index and find the documents it maps to: doc one, three, four, seven, and eight. Then I'm going to look up the word engineer, and it maps to docs five, one, docs one, three, four, and five. And so for the, work, for the search software and engineer, you've just found the intersection of those two, and that is your result set that would come back. So this example here, and most of the examples you've probably worked with in the past are text, but like we said, this Lucene is a matching engine, not just a text search engine. So uh, we're going to be taking, some look, taking a look at some other ways that you can actually do the, this matching. So... Um, in this, in this case, you're matching text from a, from a query to text in a document, but you could just as easily match any other token in a query to any other token in a document. So that could be text, it could be attributes, it could be locations, results of functions, user behavior, um, or um, even classifications that you've uh, passed into the search engine. So before I go into the actual implementations, I just want to make a quick business case for recommendations. So j just to show of hands really quickly, how many of you in here actually have some form of a recommendation engine today? OK, so mo most of the room. OK. Um, I, I would imagine many of you are probably powering that off of Mahout or um, some kind of offline, uh, offline processes that you run and generate those recommendations. Um, 
but I'm going to show you today how in solar you can actually implement those recommendations just as easily if your content fits in solar. So uh, we're going to go through um, several different types of recommendations, attribute based, so based upon like income level, hobbies, a location, um, or uh, a level of experience. Um, hierarchical recommendations where you've maybe got people pre-broken down into categories uh, where you can actually drill down into those. Um, textual similarity based, um, and then also um, some concept based recommendations. So starting from some original text, how can you extract out concepts and then do recommendations based upon those concepts? Um, and then lastly, I'm going to go over collaborative filtering, um, how you can implement, implement that in solar, and then some hybrid approaches. So starting out with content based recommendation approaches. So uh, let's assume, so in, in our case, we're a job search engine for the most part. So let's take a user and say we know some information about them. We've got a profile. Uh, this is Jane. Jane is in the healthcare industry. She's located in Boston. Her current job title is nurse educator, and her salary is uh, 40000 somewhere in the range of $40,000 to $60,000. So normally, someone would, would come to your site. They would look at your nice user interface, and they would select... Um, a salary range that they want to search on. They would um, select an industry. They would type in a location and maybe type in some keywords. You would run a search for them. You would return them results. However, that's a lot of work on the user's part. So if you've got this information already, why not just run a search for them? So nurse educator, probably the title is the most important part of this uh, profile we've got here. Um, they're located in Boston, but they're probably also willing to work in places in Massachusetts that aren't Boston. But So if they match Boston, we'll boost them higher. But if they're only in Massachusetts, they just get a, a standard boost. And then um, if their salary happens to fall within this range, I'm going to give them a boost using a function query uh, based upon their salary so that um, if the job's salary matches their salary, it's actually going to show up higher because it's more relevant to them. Um, this is a very simple query. If, if you look at this, it's not hard to run this query. But the key is you're doing it automatically for your user. You're not requiring your user to interact with your site. So when I was talking about the business case for recommendations, one thing I failed to mention is that uh, for many sites like CareerBuilder, um, about half of all of our job applications come from recommendations, not from user search. So user search powers half, but recommendations also power half. So if you're requiring your user to actually come to your site and enter in keywords and text to run a search, you're missing out on a significant portion of additional value that you could be providing if you would, ju if you would just automate this for them. So again, attribute-based attribute recommendations, very easy to implement. The more you know about your user, the more you can actually uh, turn that into a search that will provide them relevant results. Um, hierarchical recommendations, um, very easy. So here's Jane again. This time, um, I have taken her resume, and I have tried to classify her into a specific industry. But I'm not always right when I classify. I could be wrong. So instead of just t tagging her to one industry, I've tagged her to a top industry that is the most probable for her to be in. And then I've got some backups just in case I was wrong. So in this case, I believe that Jane is in the healthcare um, field, um, is a nurse, and is a, with a spe has a specialty in oncology. Uh, but if that's not the case, my next best guess is that she's a nurse with especially in transplant. And then if I'm really wrong, my third option is she's actually a nursing teacher. So she's an educator teaching university um, and uh, she's a nurse. So again, you've got this information about her. What can you do with it? Let's turn it into a query. So in this particular... It's something we have to do offline, right? Um, you, you could... Um, if you've got information about her, you could actually pass that into Solar as a query and do something like grabbing the facets that come back and use the top facets as the basis of classifying. Uh, you're going to get a lot better results using something like Mahout offline. But um, if you desperately need to try to make a guess, um, you could certainly use some combination of keywords and facet to, to come up with that. But yeah, we do this offline. Uh, so anyway, turn this into a query. Um, my top guest gets a higher boost. My, my next group gets half the boost. My next group gets half the boost. And then if I get um, the more detailed I am, the, better, the higher the boost I get. So again, not, not a difficult query to construct. But the point is, you can take this hierarchical information that you believe you know about the user, turn it into a weighted query, and then get results back based upon how well they match the hierarchy for this particular user you believe uh, they fit within. 
so next is text similarity-based recommendations. Um, I'm not going to actually spend much time on this one because it's fairly well documented in the, uh, on the Solar Wiki and, and elsewhere. But uh, there is a more like this request handler built into Solar, which you can actually use. Uh, the way it works is um, you run a search for a particular document. You can say, I want to see more documents like this. Internally, it finds the, uh, a, a group of keywords, or a group of tokens, excuse me, which uh, match that document, which are fairly rare. They uh, tend to have a good um, IDF value. Uh, I don't remember if TF is included in there or not, but um, it finds important words for a particular document and then runs those as a keyword search against uh, your other documents. So um, it tends to work pretty well, but it is textual based. So if you've got uh, text that maybe belongs to multiple industries in our case, um, and you run a search for that, you might get some, some slightly odd results just because it's purely based upon the text and the tokens um, and you're not able to kind of understand the, the realm of what it's talking about. Uh, but here's the link if you want to actually check out the more like this handler. Um, one caveat with it is it doesn't currently work in a distributed fashion. So if you've got um, content that doesn't all fit within one solar core, you can't currently use it. There is a patch uh, which I've heard works but I haven't played with. Um, but hopefully that'll get committed at some point in the not too distant future and then you can actually use this in a distributed fashion. All right, so the next type, um, this one I find particularly interesting, um, is concept-based recommendations. So the idea is maybe you've got a keyword you know about the user, um, maybe you've got a job title, maybe if you're a product site you've got um, products they've previously bought, something like that. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can run concept-based recommendations. Uh, one is you can create a taxonomy and dictionary that defines your concepts and then go one of two approaches. Either every time you post, in our case, a job or if you've got products every time a new product is added, you could actually manually tag concepts related to um, that document. Um, that's very labor intensive, so if you're at any high volume, you're not going to want to do that. You could look at Amazon Mechanical Turk if you really need to do that, but um, I don't really recommend that approach. Um, and then most of the people in this room are going to be more interested in some kind of a machine learning based um, automatic classification where you've got some initial document set which you have tagged, then you pass more documents in and based upon uh, the machine learning algorithms you can actually tag the new documents um, relatively effectively. Um, you'll be off a little bit. So that's another approach. Uh, but then a third approach um, is you can actually use unsupervised machine learning algorithms like clustering to derive concepts sort of on the fly. Um, you could do this in Mahout, but you can also do it um, live in real time with Solar using uh, a built-in capability, which is the integration of the caret2 clustering um, algorithms. So um, just for those of you who may not have a good overview of how clustering works, um, this is just a quick visual demonstration. Um, I just ran a search for .NET. Um, these are some of the results that came back. Um, within those results, um, you would imagine that there's, oh, yep. Um, I'm going to do questions at the end, but go, go ahead. Yep. L let me get through this part and then I'll address that directly. Um, it depends on how you're trying to use the concepts, is what I would say. Um, you're going to have a lot of noise in there, but depending upon how you're using them, you, they may, or may be more useful than in other ways. So I'll, I'll get to that in one second. Um, so in terms of clustering, you get these results back. Within those results, you would expect there to be similarities. And in fact, if I look at all the results that come back, I notice that software engineer is a, a phrase that keeps occurring over and over. I also notice that developer is a phrase that occurs over and over, C sharp and .NET developer. So in this case, what I've effectively done is run a search, bring back a bunch of results that match that search well, and then find what's similar between those results and tag those as concepts. So in the case of .NET, related concepts are .NET developer, software engineer, C sharp, and developer. Um, so you can imagine how you could actually take this and effectively on the fly, because this was generated on the fly from caret2, you could actually um, generate some recommendation queries based upon this. So um, if you've never worked with clustering in Solar before, this is a quick um, example of how you can uh, set up uh, caret2 clustering. 
basically there's a clustering component in solar that you can configure using um, a block similar to this top piece. And then once you've configured that clustering component, you can either add it into your normal uh, request handler um, list of components like this, or in my case, I've actually created an entirely separate request handler which just does clustering. So you can do it either way. Uh, but uh, important things to note are um, you want to define your, your clustering algorithm you're going to use. Uh, and then uh, these are just basic defaults in there. So then once you've set this up in Solar, you can actually run a query against this request handler that would look something like this. So the information I know about the user is that they're in nursing. Maybe that's their job title, maybe that's a search they previously run, but I know that somehow or other they are related to this keyword. So what can I do with that? Well, I could turn around and run a search for nursing, and I'm gonna get the same result set every time, and it's all gonna be nursing, and it has to have that token. But if I want to expand out beyond that, I'm going to take my, uh, I'm gonna run my clustering query, and then what I actually get back is something that looks like this. This is a visual representation. You'll actually get documents back and, and labels that you can work with. But um, when I run a search for nursing, I see that it is related to registered nurse, nurse case manager, uh, assistant director, staff nurse, nursing supervisor, but also that it's related to things like assistant or staff, which by themselves don't actually mean that much. They, they're, they're noise, right? Um, so the question is, because we have both good and bad, what can we do with those? Um, here's, here's another example for the .NET case from earlier. You'll notice that the, the field of nursing is nice and clean, cleanly laid out. Dot, .NET, because it was, is within the software engineering realm, um, is actually really messy because you see things like um, software engineer, software developer, but you also see things like SharePoint because a lot of people doing SharePoint also use .NET. Uh, so there, it's just a, a lot bigger of a mess. But what you do see is concepts that could likely be related to .NET. So this is an example of me running a query for Solar or Lucene. So normally I would search for, the, for Solar or Lucene. The results I would get back would be a small document set which only have those keywords in, them, in, in the document set. But when I run that search and turn clustering on, I actually get clusters back which look something like what I have over here um, on the far right, which are developer, Java developer, software, senior Java developer, et cetera, you actually see Hadoop engineer in there. Um, even though Hadoop and Lucene and Solar aren't the same thing and wouldn't come back for the same keyword search, you see that somehow these concepts are related. Uh, so this is an example of the type of clustering results we, got, we get back from Carrot2. Um, search is in there, you would expect. Um, I'm trying to think if there's, like the word software by itself is relevant, but by it, in and of itself doesn't do much for you. Um, and you could also bring back um, facets based upon the search to see that computer software engineer and web developer are the two categories that best matched for this query. Then if you take those and turn those into a recommendation query, it might look something like this, where the count that I got back is indicative of the relative weight, how important these things are, and I could turn them into a query here. Now this is a very simplistic example where I've taken the exact weight and mapped it onto the terms here. You may want to in your algorithm, adjust them, have some kind of a different scale on it. But this is just showing you an example of how you can weight these things. Um, and then at the end, I also added in those two facets that came back to try to um, limit the result set that came back. You may or may not want to do that. Um, you also may or may not want to add the original keywords the user typed into this recommendation query as well um, as or so that they get a higher weight, but you're still matching other things. Um, to come back to the question of noise, uh, what I would say is if you're trying to extract concepts for the purpose of displaying them to your end user, don't do it. Or at least I would not do that because you're going to display a lot of noise and your customers are going to think you're stupid. <laughs> They're going to see things on there that don't make any sense and it's just not going to work out well. However, if you're extracting concepts for the purpose of turning around and running a search behind the scenes, maybe 20% of this is noise or 10% is noise. You said about 10%? What, what were you seeing? Yeah, you need to tune that algorithm. We're using Mahout. What we're you using? Are you are you clustering on uh, raw text like a content field, or are you clustering on something like a, a title? Because if you cluster on raw text, you're going to get a lot more noise than if you cluster on something that is a lot more normalized. Like in our case, we'll cluster on job title because 
it's usually a small, small and succinct and a good representation of, what rep, of what's in the document. Yeah, absolutely. Right, exactly. So like, if, if you're gonna use clustering on just a general content field that has things like of, the, and, and random general words in it that don't have anything to do with the content, then you're gonna get a lot worse results than if you're using something that you know describes the content very succinctly. So that, that's where we are able to use this effectively here because I'm using the job title field to actually pull these out. So it's, it's domain dependent and it's also dependent upon what information you're using and how accurately it describes your content. Um, but in our case, we also get some noise. Ours is more like 10 to 20%. But when you turn it into a search query, that noise gets drowned out by all the good concepts that come back. All of the good clusters you've identified um, end up outweighing the noise you get. And if you do apply some kind of a filter like I've done at the very bottom here, you can get rid of things which are in an entirely different domain. So there's lots of ways you can craft this query to bubble up things that match more concepts, uh, but to also filter out things which, are, which you know are not related. Um, and then the resulting recommendations that come back, you see things like, um, and in this particular search on the next page, I actually added back the original keywords in. So I see things like software engineer, this first one mentions Lucene, and then the ones after it are Java developers, um, and a solutions architect, which I would have to dig into the job description to see what was actually matching in that query. But these aren't Solar and Lucene recommendations per se, but they're probably fairly relevant to whoever was running that search. So that's a way that you can generate these recommendations um, and expand your search out to related concepts without um, limiting exactly to the um, text that was originally there. Okay, then an important sidebar here is uh, a mention of geography. So it, there's lots of use cases where adding a geography filter onto your recommendations is gonna be really valuable. Uh, in our case, we're a job site, and jobs are located at a specific location, and so are the people that are searching for them. So for a use case uh, like jobs and resumes, uh, tickets for concerts, uh, restaurants, if you're searching for any of those types of things, you're definitely gonna wanna look to augment your recommendations with either a geography filter or a geography boost, uh, but then if you're a product site, like if you're on Amazon.com and you've got books, songs, movies, things like that, those aren't location sensitive at all, so you're really gonna wanna leave, leave geography off of those. Uh, that's pr pretty much common sense, but um, it's really dependent upon your domain and, and how you wanna use it. But all of the types of recommendation queries I was showing you before, you could tack on, this is just a boost of the relevancy based upon geography. You could tack that on to boost things up that are higher, uh, boost things up higher that are closer to you geographically. Um, or if you want to limit the result set to only a location, you could add this on as a filter which uh, actually limits the result set there. So use geography based upon your domain. It can actually significantly increase the quality of the recommendations coming back. Yep. Geodist? Uh, it's in solar, is it definitely in solar four. It's in, I think it's in the 3X branch as well. It has, I think it's been for at least one or two releases. It's available. There's actually, so I, I mentioned down here, there's dozens of ways to do geography searching in solar. Uh, this is one example using the Geodist function. You can also do things like uh, using, the, like what we actually do is use the squared Euclidean distance because it's um, cheaper to calculate without having to do a square root, and then we use it purely for the purpose of, of sorting um, or boosting. Uh, but you, if you need an actual location, you can use something like the geodisk function. Um, there's, there's, if, if you just search for solar spatial, uh, you'll actually, there, there's a wiki that talks about lots of different ways to do geography, uh, boosting or filtering. Uh, yep, absolutely. Um, and then lastly, collaborative filtering. So, uh, again, going back to our inverted index, um, this is my content which went in on the left. Um, we, we mentioned before taking text and parsing it, but uh, one thing I pointed out was that it's tokens, it's not text. So in this case, when a user comes to our site and they apply to a job, we can actually take that user's, user's ID and stamp it back on the job that they applied to. So if the average job gets 30 or 50 applications, whatever that number ends up being, we can stamp 30 or 50 IDs of users back onto the jobs. Once we've done that, 
this is what our inverted index looks like. So now I can actually effectively use this information for collaborative filtering. The way I do that is step one, I have an initial document and I want to find similar recommendations for that document. So let's say a user comes to our site, they apply to a job. After they've applied to that job, I want to show them more recommendations like the job they applied to. I can, or in this case, I've got two jobs they've applied to. So I can search for the first job they applied to, the second job they applied to. And what I get back when I look that up is a list of the most similar users to that user based upon the jobs that they've applied to. So again, we look up the documents, we find the users, and then based upon the built-in relevancy um, algorithm, which you can customize if you want, but you don't have to, um, you can actually get back a list of top users who are related to that user. Once you have those users, you can turn around and format another query based upon those users. Um, you can implement your own request handler to do that for you in Solar, or you can just issue two queries to Solar. It doesn't really matter. It's dependent upon how much Java code you want to write. Um, and then my second search, starting with those similar users, I just turn it into a query. So I want to search for user one based upon their boost, or uh, sorry, user five, user four, user one, who are the ones who match, and then uh, give them appropriate boosts. And then I then go back, um, I look up, based upon those users, I have the users in a separate field, find the documents, and then I've now got my top recommended documents. And those are basically, uh, I've, I've taken a document, found the most similar users who also applied to that document or that set of documents, and then map those back to other documents, uh, which I can now recommend back to my user. And they're documents that are similar to what they originally applied to. The beauty of this is I don't actually have to know anything about the content. I don't have to know any of those attributes that I showed you earlier. All I have to do is take in the user behavior, send it to the search engine, and then based upon other users, I, I can recommend. So this is, this is the Amazon, hey, people who saw this book also liked this other book. This, this is that model. That's what collaborative filtering is, is. Users who like this also like this other thing. Um, but it doesn't have to just be user to user. It can be user mapping to item, user mapping to item, mapping back to user, item mapping to user to item. I mean, you, you can do any number of variations of this. The idea is, if you've got behavior from your customers that are associated with particular documents, add that behavior to the documents, and then when you're running searches, you can um, actually uh, boost things based upon that behavior. Okay, so comparing that with Mahout for a second, um, we have actually, played with doing this in Solar and doing it in Mahout. Um, the advantages of Solar are that, for us, the data is already present and up to date in Solar. In Mahout, it's processed offline. You have to take a data dump, put it in your Hadoop cluster, um, and then run it in batches. Um, and so the data gets stale. And in our case, people are constantly using our website and applying. And so any latency that's added into that offline processing is problematic. Um, it also, using Solar also doesn't require writing significant code to make changes. Um, you're basically just manipulating queries here and seeing what comes back and what works best. Um, the recommendations are also real time, so as soon as the content goes to the search engine or as soon as we've refloated it with updated information, we can immediately recommend based upon it for any users on our site. So if you come to our site, you can hit a page, immediately see recommendations without having to wait on them to be processed offline. Um, we also um, allow easy, this allows easy utilization of um, any content and available functions to boost results. So you're not limited to whatever the collaborative filtering algorithm in Mahout does or however you want to customize it. You can actually use any of the complex query capabilities that Solar provides to augment your recommendations. Um, and so our initial test versus Mahout, doing this versus the collaborative filtering in Mahout showed that this significantly um, outperformed Mahout. Uh, you can probably imagine the reasons. One is there's a lot that we can do beyond just collaborative filtering, adding onto the query to make it better. Um, the other thing, like I mentioned, was the latency. Uh, when we have to take a snapshot and do things offline, it introduces some latency there so the content can become stale. Um, we, we do think that it's possible that we might be able to get better recommendations out of Mahout, but out of the box, if there is such a thing, there's not really an out of the box with Mahout, but if there is such a thing, um, we're still performing better right now um, with a lot of work, we think we could probably get Mahout up to this level, but we're, that's not what we saw initially. Yep. Is that performance on the computing level? No, this is quality. This is result quality. Um, I mean, the computing level performance, we, we don't pay much attention to, right? You buy more servers, optimize, do what you need to do. This, this is 
the, and the, the way that we measure this is number of job applications. So if I create a recommendation query and that recommendation query results in less people applying to jobs, I've done something wrong. If it results in more people applying to jobs, I've done something right. Um, pe more people are seeing more relevant results. Um, so our general takeaway, again, um, is that if you've got a lot of data and you can't fit it in solar, if you've got a lot of data and you can't manage it, you use Hadoop, right? Hadoop's, one of Hadoop's primary purposes is to manage the data that you can't otherwise manage. But if you've already got your data in solar, you've already got a sparse matrix set up with your information, why do you want to go use Hadoop? Why do you want to do something offline? There may be other algorithms that are effective in Mahal, and we actually use several of them um, for other reasons, but for this particular problem, solar seems to solve uh, recommendations better than Mahal for what we're doing. You're, again, you, you may see differently with your data, but th that's, that's what we see. Um, and then again, because we already scale um, using solar, we, we don't have to go that route. Um, so I'm, on hybrid recommendations, I'm not going to spend uh, much of any time on this. I think you get it at this point. Um, with solar, you can take any combination of factors, turn them into a query, and as long as each of those factors helps increase the quality of your query, then uh, you're going to you're going to get better results, and you can manipulate that anytime you want. So this is rec this is combining hierarchical recommendations with um, some of the attributes that we saw earlier. And you'll generally get better results when you combine, but not always. So test. So um, in the last couple of minutes, um, just a couple of things we do at Career Builder. I'm going to go through fairly quickly. Um, one is payload scoring, another is measuring results quality, and then understanding our users. So for payload scoring, um, everything I showed you thus far, you can do with solar out of the box with no customization. But if you customize, you can obviously uh, do more. So in our case, we've got lots of different structured information. We don't necessarily want to search across dozens of fields every time we run a search. Um, all right, so really quickly, uh, back to payloads. Uh, so basically what we do when, when terms come in, we actually tag each term with a payload. That payload's associated with a bucket. Um, so this is an example of text coming into one field. Um, that text actually originally mapped from different fields. So my job title was actually bucket one. My company was bucket two. Job description was my default bucket, which is no payload. And um, experience is a third bucket. Um, and then what ends up happening is when we query, we only ever have to query one field. We don't have to search across lots of fields. We query one field, and then when we're scoring, we actually, uh, at query time, pass in boosts that are associated with each bucket. So our scoring algorithm says, hey, I've got a term. It's in bucket one. The, at query time, for bucket one, you pass me in a boost of 10. So I'm going to apply a boost of 10 to any content matching that bucket. Um, and talk to me offline, because we're, we're short on time. but um, th this is a way that we're able to optimize our queries, and we can actually effectively create hundreds of different levels of, um, of uh, boost boosting within a document, um, and it, it saves us a lot in terms of processing. Um, measuring result quality, um, all I want to say here is we do very active A-B testing. So when you're rolling out recommendation algorithms or any search improvements, uh, you always want to uh, Take an original control group, try your new algorithm out with a test group, and compare the performance. So in our case, um, the number of job applications tells us how well we're doing. So when we run things side by side, we're able to uh, very easily tell um, if a new algorithm did better or did worse and adjust accordingly. So we're running these A-B tests all the time. If you're able to, with your data and with your users, I would recommend the same. I realize not everyone has the same kind of traffic we have, so you, you may have to resort to some other options for that. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to say it's really, really important that you understand your users. Um, for us, if you come to our website and run one search, we've got enough information to do those concept-based recommendations we talked about, right? I take the word solar, I can map it to some concepts, do some recommendations, um, just based upon a previous search. They're, very, they're not very good recommendations. They could be a lot better. If I have more queries, more words, um, I could do more with them. If you actually start viewing jobs, we now know those are, that's kind of like a vote, right? We now know more information about you than the types of things you're interested in. If you upload a resume to us, now we know attributes about you. We know a lot more, and we can use that to power the recommendations. So the idea is that there's no such thing as one right recommendation algorithm, no matter what type of system you're using, whether it's 
Solar or Mahout or something that you um, roll out yourself. The idea is that the more you know about your users, the more you can increase the quality of your recommendations and the algorithm you're running. Um, and then lastly, this is an example of us understanding our users. This is us doing a sensitivity test um, using Mahout and just some standard statistics um, and trying to figure out how sensitive people are to the, their low, to the distance away from the job that they live. So what we found, at the, about the 50th percentile, software engineers really, really don't care if they have to move clear across the country to get a better job. They're happy to move. Um, at, but however, food preparation workers on the other end, at the 95th percentile, they were not willing to move more than 20 miles away. We're not willing to work somewhere more than 20 miles away from where they live. So it's very, so this allows us to, when we're doing recommendations, actually tailor our geography filtering or boosting based upon what we know about them. So beyond just simply the keyword searching, um, it's really important to be able to understand your users and adjust the um, algorithms accordingly. Um, so key takeaways, um, recommendations can be, depending upon your business use case, as valuable or more valuable than uh, just straight up keyword search. Um, if your data fits in solar, it's already there. There's no need to use an offline system like Hadoop or, or Mahout. You can, and you might get better results with it, but I wouldn't necessarily start there if you've already got solar up and running. Um, and then lastly, um, even a single keyword can be enough to begin making meaningful recommendations and then just build from there. Um, the more information you have, the better the queries and the better the recommendations. So um, here's my contact info. I know we're out of time, I think. We're so we're over. Um, so I would say if you have any questions, come up and talk to me after. Um, and um, I've also got some business cards up here if anybody wants to come grab one. So appreciate you coming. Um, let me know if you have any questions.